for breeding of fruit crops i would say uh, he is uh, heading the department of fruit science in iahr bengaluru and he has got very good number of uh, publications and is guiding pg and phd students for his credit so i welcome dr shankaran uh, to deliver his uh, guest lecture to the students of uh, fruit science department uh, in the three campuses coimbatore periyakulam and trichy so i would like to thank the professor and head department of fruit crops his team especially the pg coordinator for making all the arrangements in a proper manner to have this guest lecture thank you very good afternoon everyone uh, uh, dear uh, colleagues and uh, students it's a very good chance uh, we had today with uh, dr m sankaran is a principal scientist and head uh, the uh, division of uh, fruit science uh, actually in uh, ihr bangalore uh, he is my alumni of our tnau he is my classmate all both uh, he sitting in the stage are uh, classmates uh, so on behalf of everyone uh, uh, in addition to dr indurani uh, i welcome uh, dr sankaran uh, he, he had very very big uh, broad experience in uh, fruit science actually we had our uh, ug degree in periyakulam during 2000, 1992 to 96 and uh, 99 we have completed our uh, pg program in here kachiandarai koyambatur and uh, from that uh, for phd he went to iri in fruit science he did his uh, phd in uh, iri and he has completed uh, in the year 2003 and uh, directly in 2003 he has joined as uh, scientist mainly in uh, north eastern uh, state uh, tripura he started his career in tripura around 5 uh, years he had 5 uh, years or 6 years uh, sangra 5 years 4 month he had worked in uh, tripura north eastern eastern uh, state then uh, he went to andaman and nigobar a senior scientist and then uh, he uh, 6 years in andaman 6 uh, years and then uh, he came to ihr bangalore as principal scientist now he is a principal scientist and head uh, division of fruit science uh, uh, bangalore so he had a very good uh, experience uh, in all the areas throughout uh, india and released many varieties especially pumalo coconut and uh, mango and recently in uh, papaya also is working and uh, um, actually the many projects he handled around 15 projects i think 40 40 research papers he had and fruit science so i think we had a very good chance in fruit breeding he want to deliver his lecture please be interact with our guest and get the benefit of all this okay thank you Yeah, thanks, uh, Dr. Hindu Rani and uh, Mutuel uh, for the nice introductions. Uh, respected seniors, uh, my friends and students, uh, good afternoon to all of you. Indeed, it's a great honor to be here amongst you to deliver a talk on uh, fruit breeding in India. Um, and I should uh, first of all thank uh, Dr. Mutuel for giving me this opportunity. to share some of my uh, thoughts with you all um so as introduced uh, by uh, dr indrani uh, i am from iih uh, in the division of fruit crops uh, we are handling uh, almost uh, 15 fruit crops uh, having two major projects one is improvement another one is uh, production of uh, fruit crops mainly on uh, refinement of production technologies coming to this uh, today's topic um so we have already uh, bypassed china with with regard to populations and uh, by 2050 our uh, production of fruit crops especially 110 million tons should be 220 million tons so we have uh, 25 million hectare area under uh, horticultural crops of which almost 7.2 million hectare is under fruit crops so we have to double the production to meet the population demand and uh, if you see the uh, availability of uh, food grains 
we are plenty we have we have plenty of uh, food grains but there are hidden hunger problems so these are the statistics i don't want to go into detail but uh, the agriculture is going to play a major role in alleviating the uh, micronutrients problem vitamins problem and so on so we have a very good uh, bright future in the years to come okay um so coming to agriculture sector we have been growing and will grow further because of the climate change and uh, see our area it is uh, it has increased from uh, 18.7 million hectare to 27.5 million hectare in case of agriculture crops and uh, our productivity also gone up to 34% and we are the global leader in uh, banana mango guava papaya pomegranate sapota acid lime and many other crops but our export standards are very very poor so we should work more on the quality aspects of fruit crops vis a vis the production also so coming to the fruit breeding so our uh, fruit breeding uh, journey was started in the year 1905 uh, it was started by late g s seema deshmukh and uh, subsequently by prayag and burns in 1921 at ganesh kent fruit experiment station and many of you know that uh, the lucknow l49 that variety has been renamed in memory of dr g s seema okay so he he uh, started the concept of fruit breeding in india and he is the he was the pioneer person in uh, india and uh, subsequently after the independence several research institutes networks pro programs have been started and uh, many of the research institutes they have developed the varieties by using various methods uh, there are uh, uh, pomological research institutes like uh, ira ihr csh cath uh, caah these are all icr institutes under articulation smd we have 23 uh, articulation research stations and uh, we have uh, national research centers for uh, crop specific uh, purposes like uh, banana citrus grapes uh, pomegranate lychee and even uh, makana it is not under fruit crops but uh, i have added for the knowledge of the students and uh, uh, for any breeding program uh, there should be the variability variability will be available in the form of genotypes so the conservation of uh, genotypes in the field gene bank in the name of national active germ plasm site is the primary step in any breeding program so we have uh, national active germ plasm sites for various fruit crops in addition to that it is mandatory to have safety duplicates also by chance if any natural calamity happens we will lose the genetic resources so it is better to have the safety duplicates so that's why uh, the government of india has a policy to maintain the safety duplicates for various crops so coming to the breeding um, problems so most of the fruit crops are perennial and they are highly heterozygous and uh, because of complex uh, floral characteristics it is very difficult to make the hybridization and after the hybridization also the fruit set fruit retention recovery of uh, f0 fruits all these are problems in addition to that there are genetic problems like apomixis incompatibility parthenocarpy and so on and uh, apart from that we should have more area for evaluation of progenies and uh, long pre breeding cycle i mean juvenility so these are the problems associated with uh, fruit breeding and uh, there are two approaches mainly should be followed for uh, fruit breeding one is uh, cyan breeding another one is rootstock breeding so cyan is the actual variety which is going to give the fruits and whereas the rootstock it is used to overcome the uh, some of the abiotic stresses like salinity and drought and uh, some of the diseases like wilt and other problems or nematodes so we should have uh, the two approaches to increase the area and production of fruit crops especially for cyan breeding the focus should be given on color and eye yield and dwarfness precocity and regular bearing 
seedlessness or soft seeded or even rudimentary seeded and uh, fruits with high micronutrient content or nutrients with regard to root stocks i should have compatibility with the desired commercial variety and it should impart the dwarfness due to stannic effect and uh, better utilization of nutrients resistant to biotic and abiotic stresses and uh, this rootstock can either be used as a rootstock or it can be used as a parent in a breeding program so uh, coming to the breeding methods as i told the, we should have uh, the potential donors to incorporate the specific traits in any breeding program so the uh, these are the breeding methods like introduction selection there are uh, two types of selection one is uh, open pollinated seedling selection as i told the most of the fruit crops are heterozygous so we'll have large variability so through open pollinated seedling selection we can select the variety so most of the today's varieties are through open pollinated seedling selection most of the fruit crops and the contribution through hybridization and uh, other methods comes later only then next one is clonal selection the clone is one which is similar to mother plant except for one or few traits so for example dasheri 51 it is a clone from dasheri so dasheri is having alternate bearing or irregular, irregular bearing but dasheri 51 is having regular bearing so this is the only one trait which is different from the mother plant then next one is opsib opsib means we know only one parentage and other male parent we don't know then hybridization it is a simple uh, uh, hybridization followed by uh, evaluation of progenies and subsequently it can be multiplied through vegetative propagation and mutation uh, this method is followed to address either one or few traits uh, especially the tightly linked traits in case of polyploid breeding it is attempted wherever the crops which are having less chromosome number are to overcome the cross incompatibility problem so whenever you use the wild relatives there will be uh, the sterility problem in the resulting hybrids so in order to overcome the sterility problem we should double the chromosome and subsequently it can be crossed back with the cultivated one and uh, the other biotechnological approaches like transgenics cisgenics and recent one is genome editing so these are all the breeding methods widely followed in fruit crops so coming to introductions um, i will uh, name few varieties which uh, those varieties have revolutionized fruit production in india the number one is grand nine variety of banana uh, this variety was introduced from france and uh, 365 days we are eating grand nine banana and second one is kinu mandarin which is very popular in punjab and uh, other re- northwestern regions of india and thompson seedless also uh, initially it was a major variety and even today also it is a major variety and it is mainly used for rice making purpose and red globe whatever you see in market the bold berries pink bold berries it is very popular this is an introduction from usa and in mango uh, whatever i have mentioned here uh, tommy atkins uh, kensington pride karabova kensington pride is very popular in australia and uh, karabova is very popular in uh, philippines and uh, solo papaya also it was earlier introduced then this is being used in breeding program for development of uh, gynodaceous papaya varieties and pineapple uh, among this uh, mauritius is very popular in kerala and the queen is very popular in uh, tripura and uh, q is very popular in northeastern india so these are the major popular varieties we have introduced and these varieties are playing a major role in uh, india's fruit production uh, these are some of the uh, introduced uh, apple varieties of which uh, the delicious varieties are very popular in jammu kashmir and himachal pradesh and uh, as i told uh, the many of the uh, introduced varieties uh, are playing major role in fruit production in india red globe and thompson seedless are very popular and uh, coming to selections um, you know, whatever um, uh, i have mentioned earlier in case of uh, uh, grapes 
um, there are three varieties from single clone one is uh, the thompson seedless clones tashigenes manakshamman and sonaka and kismis cherni is the variety from russia which has given uh, varieties like sharad seedless sarita seedless and krishna seedless so these are all the uh, clonal selections and uh, in case of jackfruit we at ihr have identified siddhu and shankara and many other uh, varieties also have been identified by various uh, institutes um, and in case of jam and this kongan badle from uh, dr b s k b b dapoli they have uh, identified this variety and uh, in case of uh, um, i think the custard apple nmk1 this is also very popular among uh, farmers and uh, coming to pomelo these two are uh, uh, my varieties in pomelo uh, the there are three problems one is bitterness bitterness due to limonin as well as naringenin and the second problem is thick skin or rind and uh, the third problem is high number of seeds so these two varieties are free from bitterness Uh, at the end after the taste you will find little bitterness but but whereas other varieties you cannot eat so at least these two varieties you can eat so coming to uh, acid lime uh, so far uh, 13 varieties have been released and uh, among 13 varieties uh, balaji is the most uh, important one which is ruling uh, major area and this particular variety is having uh, uh resistance to or tolerance to uh, canker and apart from this there is uh, one more variety called petlur selection so that variety is also a very important variety uh, then in case of uh, jackfruit uh, uh, we have two varieties one is siddu and uh, another one is shankara both are having coppery red bulb and uh, medium size uh, fruit and uh, Uh, we have a huge demand for these two varieties and these two varieties are from farmers uh, we our institute uh, we have encouraged the uh, custodian farmers uh, concept and we helped the farmers to research these two varieties with ppb fra and uh, uh, other there are uh, many other varieties uh, developed through selections i will just uh, skip uh, this and these are all the banana varieties from uh, uh nrc banana all are selections only and uh, these are the varieties from tamarind uh, all of them are selections and uh, in tamarind there are uh, two two segments one is sour type and another one is sweet type so in sweet type uh, there are four varieties and you can uh, the, anyway i am giving the ppt here all of you can copy and read okay i'll just with due to paucity of time i'm just uh, uh, rushing through and in case of palm granite uh, there are two important varieties which are ruling now one is bagwa another one is super bagwa the difference between bagwa and super bagwa is uh, in case of super bagwa the number of fruits are more and it is little early compared to bagwa and um, the work is going on uh, for the improvement of nodal blight Uh, we at ihr have identified uh, there is a one usda collection called 99a which is having resistance or resistance to bacterial blight but the problem is it is not flowering under bengaluru condition so we have uh, shifted uh, some of the plants to cath and himachal pradesh to uh, for induction of flowering once we get flowering in that the pollen grains will be brought back to bengaluru condition and maharashtra condition the breeding work will be restarted uh then uh, these are all the varieties uh, from uh, our cash sister institutes uh, central institute of arid horticulture goma kirti and uh, tar multi uh, these are the two varieties and whatever you find big uh, uh, berries in market that is called thai berry thai ber okay so these are the three varieties in the recent days they are popular and uh, coming to uh, anla there are so many varieties developed by nd uat and apart from that uh, uh, the icr institute also developed one variety called uh, goma aishwarya this variety is uh, very popular and uh, the bsr1 this variety is from tnao most of the pharmaceutical industries uh, they are using bsr1 
because it has got high fiber content. Um, then coming to date palm, there are two states, Rajasthan and Gujarat. The, in those st two states, this uh, whatever I have marked in the green color, Halavi and Middul, these two varieties are very popular. Um, so still the work is going on uh, for the improvement of uh, date palm with two institutes, Central Institute of Arid Articulture and Sardar Kursi Krishi uh, uh, Vishwa Vidyalaya that is there in uh, Gujarat. So that university is working on improvement of date palm. And coming to Bale, this uh, Thar Nilkanth, Goma Ayashi, Thar Divya. These are the three varieties which are very popular. Apart from that, uh, there are three institutes which are working on improvement of uh, Bale. One is CASH, Central Institute for Subtropical Articulture. Then uh, NDUAT, Narendra Deva, University of Agriculture and Technology. And uh, PANT, GV PANT, University of Agriculture and Technology. So all this may be useful for you to appear for some competitive exams. Then uh, and this is the Goma Yashi variety, which has got thin shell. In, uh, ba in Bale, the removal of shell is the big problem. So this, is, uh, this has got very thin shell and it is uh, used for uh, many value, preparation of many value added products. So Karonda, uh, there are two varieties in Karonda. One is Kongan Bolt from Maharashtra and Thar Kamal. These two are very popular. And uh, there are many other uh, varieties from uh, Pantnagar and uh, even Narendra Deva University of Agriculture Sciences and CSH also. And uh, in Jamun, uh, whatever I marked red uh, here, that uh, Kongan Badule and uh, Goma Priyanga and uh, Jamun, these three varieties are popular. Apart from that, in Karnataka, there is a variety called Dubdal that is very popular. So coming to hybridization, so in case of hybridization, we select two parents and do the crossing. After the uh, rescue of F0 fruits, we raise a large number of populations. And because of high heterozygosity, uh, we can fix the specific trait in F1 generation. And subsequently, that particular progeny can be multiplied through vegetative propagation. And we can go for uh, road trail. And uh, there are two steps. One is the primary evaluation and second one is the secondary evaluation. In case of secondary evaluation, uh, mainly we look for yield and uh, other parameters. In case of primary evaluation, we look for regular bearing, dwarfness and uh, precocity bearing, fruit quality. These are the four traits we give important. So uh, coming to mango, uh, since I'm working on mango, uh, I have put uh, the high HR hybrids. Uh, so we have released uh, six hybrids so far, of which the top two are Arka Suprabad and Arka Udaya. Arka Suprabad was released in the year 2019, and Arka Udaya was released in the year 2014. So both are double cross hybrids. Uh, uh, they are hybrid between uh, Amrapali into Arka and Mol. Amrapali is uh, um, Neelam into Dasheri. And Arka Anmol is Alphonse and Janardhan Pasan. So we have, uh, we have combined two hybrids to develop uh, the hybrid. So this is uh, Arka Udiya. Uh, even uh, uh, yesterday we had fruits of Arka Udiya. This is a very late variety, very thick pulp, firm pulp, and uh, late variety. And it has got excellent shelf life of uh, more than two weeks. And uh, TSS of more than uh, 24 degree bricks and uh, another one is Sarka Superbad. So the fruit shape is like uh, Alfonso and pulp characteristics like uh, Dasheri and uh, this is also a uh, late variety and it has got shelf life of uh, 12 to 14 days and uh, it is after the hot water treatment the Alfonso shown the uh, internal breakdown whereas this particular variety did not show any internal breakdown. So this can be uh, promoted for the export purpose. So IRA, they have released more than 10 varieties of which Amrapali and Mallika, they are very popular among farmers. And these are the recent varieties, uh, like uh, whatever I have mentioned here. Apart from this, uh, CASH Lucknow, they have also released two varieties, Ambika and Arunika. 
these are two varieties and several other state agriculture universities also released several varieties um uh, coming to papaya our institute uh, released uh, two hybrids uh, one is sarka prabhat and another one is sarka surya Arka Prabhat is having a, a fruit weight of almost 1.5 to 2 kg, whereas uh, Surya is around 800 to 1 kg. And both are very popular among uh, farmers. Apart from that, Kenya has released more than eight, eight varieties. And uh, IRA, they have released five varieties. And uh, in spite of all uh, these hybrids, uh, red lady is ruling uh, because uh, it has got uh, uh, somewhat uh, field tolerance to PRSV. And uh, we uh, introgress uh, genes from Ascansilia califlora uh, for uh, PRSV uh, resistance, and still the work is going on. And with, re with regard to Goa, uh, we have released uh, five varieties, of which uh, the Arka Kiran and uh, Arka Purna, these two are very popular among farmers. And we have licensed uh, these two hybrids uh, to 11 different nurseries and they are uh, uh, multiplying and selling uh, the uh, rooted cuttings to farmers at the rate of uh, 30 to 40 rupees. And the annual sale of these two hybrids uh, close to 5 lakhs. Apart from that, uh, the Punjab Agriculture University, they have released uh, the top four Goa varieties and lawyer one is from uh, CSH Lucknow, Lalit, um, Sweta and Dawal. Among this, uh, Lalit is very popular. So coming to the custard apple, uh, we have developed the interspecific hybrid. So we have used uh, uh, Anona Atimoya and Anona Skomosa. Island gem is uh, from Anona Atimoya and Anona Skomosa we have used uh, Mammoth to develop uh, this hybrid. The beauty of this hybrid is uh, it has got a very less seed. Uh, for 100 gram pulp, it has got uh, seven to eight seeds and high TSS, more than 30 degree bricks. And the only one problem is it requires assisted pollination for big fruit size. Uh, this, uh, this assisted pollination, uh, it is done uh, with the help of uh, pollen from uh, uh, what do you call Balanagar. So Balanagar pollen causes pseudo scenic effect to increase the fruit size. Okay, scenic effect means uh, the effect of pollen on the uh, mother plant. Okay, so it has ca it it causes pseudo scenic effect. This paper is there in art size. Whosoever is interested, they can download. Uh, the paper is authored by Dr. Jaliko and Ravindra Kumar. And um, there are four institutes which are working on the improvement of Apple. Um, so I have listed here uh, the institutes you can uh, go through. Um, because in uh, still we import a lot of uh, temperate fruits grabs. Uh, none of these uh, varieties are uh, very popular among farmers, except that uh, low one apple. And uh, coming to grapes, um, IHR, uh, IERI and the NRC grapes. These are the three institutes working on improvement of grapes. And uh, I should say the, among uh, 1.2 lakh uh, hectare, nearly about 90% uh, of the areas uh, uh, grown for uh, table purpose and remaining for the raisin making purpose. Uh, these are all the hybrids uh, you can copy. And uh, as I said, uh, the mutation breeding is attempted only in few crops. So like uh, um, banana, pomelo and papaya. And recently we are attempting in dragon fruit, uh, mainly to have uh, non-staking varieties. Because in dragon fruit, uh, the raising of poles for growing crop, it is the major investment. So we, sh we, are, we are trying to develop the uh, photo insensitive non staking type because the dra dragon fruit is a long day plant which requires extra light so uh, we are trying to uh, address these two problem uh, so with regard to the mutation breeding uh, the classical example is grapefruit so in usa they introduced uh, um, they got few seeds from barbados 
and they irradiated the seeds from that they got a dungan marsilis and uh, uh, other varieties so they have moved from the white pulp seeded to deep red seedless varieties so we can see the 1823 and still this work is continuing so it is a long drawn process and still even today it is continuing this work is continuing this is a long drawn process so through mutation breeding they could attain the white seeded variety to deep red seedless variety so this is the classical example so coming to polyploidy uh, polyploidy is uh, done in some of the crops where the chromosome numbers are less and wherever seedless uh, fruits are required or whenever we want to create a new species we can attempt the polyploid breeding uh, so the exploitation of wild relatives that is also very important so the one most important one is the use of vasconcelia califlora for integration of genes for prsv resistance and uh, we are also using uh, cdm catalianum variety catalianum which is having uh, resistance to wilt and nematode so we are introducing uh, the resistance from uh, cdm catalianum to cdm gujava and uh, so i'll just uh, skip through all this so next important trait is seedlessness so for developing the seedless fruits uh, we can attempt two breeding method one is the hybridization in this the ideally the male parent should be seedless parent and in case of mutation it is common we can go either physical mutagens or chemical mutagens for induction of mutation so these are all the crops wherein the mutation breeding is attempted or the hybridization is attempted for development of seedless fruits uh then uh, uh, the breeding for disease resistance um so for in case of apple uh, uh, the work is going on for scab resistance breeding already sarai kashmir university of agricultural technology uh, they have developed the varieties called uh, firdus shri and all for the uh, apple scab and uh, there are varieties for uh, wilt in case of goa and uh, varieties for fusarium wilt resistance in banana and papaya also so the work is also going on for the rootstock breeding for uh, increasing area under the non traditional uh, area or to overcome the abiotic stresses and biotic stresses uh, there are three uh, classes of rootstocks dwarfing rootstocks semi dwarfing rootstocks and standard size rootstocks so among this uh, the m9 and m27 are very popular and more than 13 countries are working uh, especially for the rootstock breeding in apple and uh, for the uh, drought tolerance uh, there are crops like citrus grapes and uh, peaches um, these are the crops and red and red rootstocks are there to overcome the drought and for cold also we have the identified rootstocks and salt tolerance uh, i should mention here uh, in india we are working on two crops for the salt tolerance or three crops one is uh, mango uh, in mango uh, the identified rootstock for salt tolerance is uh, 13-1 uh, kurkan nekkare turpentine and devarakyo and in case of uh, grapes 110r and uh, dogridge and apart from that uh, um, the cdm catalianum variety catalianum it is also having the tolerance to salinity so these are the three crops wherein the salt tolerance breeding is going on and in case of citrus uh, the swingle citrus mellow and uh, uh, trifoliate orange these two are the widely uh, used rootstocks across the globe and both are having the moderately tolerance to salinity and uh, these are the rootstocks for uh, um, various uh, pest and uh, pest in case of apple we have the woolly epid uh, rootstocks in case of grapes we have rootstock for nematodes of course phyllocera is not available in india and uh, we have wild species also which can be used as a rootstock 
and um, there are uh, n number of crafts having the uh, resistant sources which can be used as a root stores and uh, coming to uh, biotechnology application of biotechnology in fruit breeding um, uh, biotechnology can be applied in three areas one is for the diversity analysis and identification of genes governing the resistance or susceptibility to particular trait and third one is for the improvement purpose and these are all the genes identified for various traits genes linked to particular trait for example co gene is uh, uh, having uh, um, or it controls the columnar growth habit this columnar growth uh, is ideal for having ultra density planting in case of apple so likewise for various traits uh, genes have been identified uh, so there are uh, 15 fruit crops have been uh, sequenced so far the genome is available in public domain the use of uh, the genomics uh, information is very much uh, required in case of fruit breeding uh, for example, for shortening the fruit bre uh, breeding cycle, uh, we can uh, have two contrasting parents. Then we can identify the genomic region, identify the uh, particular uh, locus which is controlling particular trait, so that we can directly uh, screen the population with the help of markers. So this is the use of uh, this uh, genomic information. Because in particular chromosome, particular gene is responsible for expression of specific trait. So we can attempt uh, the trait specific breeding with the help of this genomic information. And these are all the uh, commercially released uh, transgenic uh, fruit crops across the globe. And, there, and uh, some 10 years back, uh, the concept of cisgenic has come. The difference between cisgenic and transgenic is in case of cisgenic, the genes will be selected from a related wild species. In case of transgenics, genes will be from unrelated species. That is the only difference. But the protocol for the development and release all are same. The recent one is the genome editing uh, with the help of uh, CRISPR-Cas9. We can edit any gene. Uh, recently, the government of India, uh, they have allowed the SDN1 and SDN2. SDN1 means uh, site-directed nucleases 1 and 2. Uh, these uh, two technologies are similar to um, any other uh, uh, transgenic approach, but uh, the protocol will be different. We need not go through the uh, any, uh, what do you call, uh, the release procedure for the transgenic is different. But in this, uh, through SDN1 and SDN2, we need not uh, go through the transgenic uh, purpose but there are several steps in this uh, icr has initiated a network project on genome editing in horticultural crops um, uh, there are more than uh, i think uh, uh, 12 or 13 crops uh, of which uh, five fruit crops have been identified in case of papaya uh, eaf 4e eaf means uh, eukaryotic initiation factor 4e for prsv resistance in case of grapes, MLO07 gene for mildew resistance, both powdery mildew and downy mildew. And for early flowering in apple, EFL gene will be used. And for drought purpose, GH3 gene will be used. And for banana, fissure milt resistance, uh, FOC gene will be used. And for guava also, uh, uh, to address the fissure milt problem, uh, genome editing will be done. So all this uh, crafts uh, uh, genomic information is publicly available. So the, with the help of CRISPR-Cas9, uh, they have attempted the ACO1 gene. So all of you may be knowing the uh, ethylene biosynthesis pathway. Uh, so from methionine, uh, ACC will come with the help of ACC oxidase, the ethylene will be produced. So they have uh, edited the ACO gene and because of uh, this uh, editing, the banana shelf life can be extended up to, up to 80 days. And after 80 days, uh, with the application or external application of ethylene, the ripening process can be restarted.
So this uh, uh, one paper, recent paper I got uh, from uh, uh, Plant Biotechnology Journal. And uh, these are all the, uh, some of the future fruits uh, where the work is going on. And recently we have released uh, two varieties in avocado. Uh, one is Arka Ravi, another one is Arka Supreme. Um, and in dragon fruit, we got a center of excellence and uh, we have collected more than uh, 65 accessions. Uh, and uh, the center of excellence will be uh, there in uh, our uh, fruit experiment station at Hirahali. And we are also working on uh, improvement of jamun and uh, even uh, bale also. And these are the uh, three future fruits. One is, uh, of course, uh, the Anona uh, muricata, which is having uh, the property of uh, uh, anti cancer property. The anti cancer property is due to the complex acetogenins. And uh, the papaya leaf extract is being used for uh, uh, dengue fever. Of course, the biochemical aspects we have to study. And even the uh, jamun seed powder, it is being used for the uh, anti diabetic purpose. So, uh, in all these three crops, we are working on biochemical profiling of uh, uh, these crops, mainly for the um, medicinal properties. So, coming to the conclusion, uh, for any improvement uh, project, we should have the genetic resources and mainstreaming of genetic resources is very important. Mainstreaming means we have to identify the traits in each uh, accession or genotype. What is the uh, practical utility of each genotype so that we can select the genotypes for specific uh, breeding purposes. And uh, of course, uh, uh, many of the uh, traits, we do not know the inheritance pattern so far. And whether this particular trait is controlled by recessive gene or the uh, dominant one, we don't know. So we have to evaluate a large number of progenies for each trait. And this will be the um, this will give an idea to overcome the uh, breeding program. I mean uh, the breeding problems. And then um, we have to prioritize the objective also based on the region. We have to prioritize the objectives. And climate change is going to be the big menace. Last five years uh, we are getting rain in uh, November and December because of that. We got uh, flowering, late flowering in mango, multiple flowering on the same tree in mango. Uh, so then the fruiting season again it coincided with the rain. So because of that, uh, the fruit quality has gone down. So we should work uh, uh, how to improve the fruit quality or how to uh, develop the off season variety or off season technology. So we have to prioritize our objective. Then um, the rootstock breeding is going to be the uh, next target. We have enough number of sand varieties, but rootstock breeding is going to be the important one for addressing the biotic and abiotic stresses. And uh, the application of the biotechnological uh, tools that can, uh, that can be useful for shortening the breeding cycle and to get the quality results. Uh, many of us are releasing the variety, but uh, the same variety is sold in uh, different name. Okay, so we should have the DNA fingerprinting of that variety. We should have complete information of that variety. And uh, even uh, the genome editing is going to be the next important uh, technique in case of biotechnology. And uh, above all, these fruit crops are getting very less funding uh, for research purpose. So we should have more funding uh, for further speeding up the breeding program. So thank you for the opportunity. Um, I think uh, uh, I have covered uh, the uh, most of the areas uh, because of paucity of time. I, I, I ran through these slides. Uh, uh, most welcome if you have any questions. Thank you. We are using uh, Arka Prabhat, which is a gynodiocese one. Pascan Celias, uh, we are using mainly for uh, PRSV tolerance. Yeah. Okay, okay. No, apart from that, we are also working on genome editing. We have almost some. 
uh, it, it has fuel tolerance even after challenge inoculation it is not showing any symptoms of prsv but virus load is there in the plant now we we got uh, flesh color pink flesh color and uh, uh, we got dino uh, gynodiaceous also so we are using aka prabhat which is uh, again a uh, hybrid of multiple cross so the stability of gynodiaceous is uh, it is uh, very high in this uh, cross combination the sterile uh, arma product is uh, very common in papaya but in this case we we didn't get any so far any sterility yeah, yeah most of the farmers they are growing uh, red lady at least they can take one crop without any problem up to 9 months they are not showing any symptom if the farmer is managing nicely you know, in bengaluru market the red lady is flooded with good quality fruits this from farmers field so this is the fact we have to accept us this is a fact we have to accept red, red lady is uh, performing very well and annually we import almost 3 tons of seeds if you google if you google uh, or if you go to dac seed net news you will find the import status hmm. yeah Yeah, it will come uh, in Tamil Nadu wherever uh, wherever the humidity is slightly high. Yeah, yeah. In Tandigudi and all, already pomelos are there. Now we can supply both the uh, both the varieties, Arka Chandra and Arka Ananta, and even still we are in the process of uh, developing the. Uh, sweet type already 600 uh, mutant populations are being evaluated hopefully in the next 7 to 8 years we will get uh, new mutants with uh, complete sweetness and pink pulp or you no know, we had a discussion uh, whether to go for seedling progenies or grafts uh, whatever the experiences we gained in kurg areas it is better to go for seedling type so because mandarin orange is having a polymeriani so whichever uh, the vigorous seedlings are there you kindly select those vigorous seedlings and uh, distribute to the farmers so ideally it should serve the purpose otherwise if you graft and give means uh, the success rate and the virus and other disease uh, problem will be very high. yeah ma three three institutes are working on uh, pomegranate ihr mpkb raguri and the nrc for pomegranate in as per form grenade they have issued the advisory for revival of uh, palm grenade there are six steps uh, if you just google it uh, in their website uh, you will find the management practices for uh, bacterial blight in palm grenade apart from that uh, wilt is becoming major problem wilt is uh, caused by ceratocystis fimbriata initially the nematodes infects the plant and subsequently this uh, ceratocystis enters and causes the death of plants so we have to attempt to, uh, we have to manage both both wilt as well as the nodal blight one is caused by fungus another one is caused by bacteria so that is the reason for decline of uh, pomegranate uh, one phd student is working uh, uh, to see this tannic effect will come to know after some 2 3 years cidium catalianum variety catalianum uh, being used as a rootstock and it is also being used uh, as uh, one of the parents in uh, sam breeding program so we need not have a rootstock compatible compatible uh, recently we published a paper uh, you can uh, you can just get in uh, google um from from south african journal of uh, Uh, horticulture one paper is there pradeep kumar et al uh, in 2022 any questions from students say uh, fast track breeding and smart breeding and all uh, we are not really doing whatever we are practicing that one only i have uh, covered here fast track breeding uh, 
Mm, I don't know. No, no Indian institutes are working on fast track breeding. Yeah. That's why I didn't put any slides. We agreed. Uh, we have a MOU with Western Sydney University in Australia. Under uh, digital articulture, uh, we are going to have a uh, um, different lighting system for induction of uh, flowering in uh, strawberry. And uh, hopefully, if that project materializes, uh, we can apply whatever you are telling no, to shorten the breeding cycle. Yeah, definitely it can be done. We are uh, we have uh, vertical structures, uh, various lighting systems, and nutrient solutions, and uh, even uh, the technique of raising the progenies. So all these uh, technologies can be integrated for shortening the breeding cycle in strawberry. Mm. Uh, if you want to grow uh, dragon fruit in off season, dragon fruit is a long day plant. So, so flowering to fruiting is just 35 days. So during uh, June, July is the ideal time or May, June, July is the ideal time to uh, October to February. If you want to grow flowering, you have to use the light, extra light hours during evening time. It is uh, being done for the production of true potato seeds. The same technique here also it is it can be applied. Yeah. No, I have asked, I think. Any question from online or from anybody? Yeah. Uh, uh, we are uh, doing in grapes and papaya. These are the two crops where the whenever we, we use the intergeneric uh, crosses or the seedless uh, uh, hybrids, when, uh, these two aspects whenever we, we use, we tend to get uh, uh, embryo abortion or tend to get the sterility. To rescue the hybrids, we follow the embryo rescue techniques. Only these two crops it is being followed. If there are no questions, uh, thank you all for patient listening. Okay. Uh, Sangran, please. Um, very much thank you. Uh, thank you our uh, guest, uh, Dr. M. Sangran, uh, who is giving a very nice uh, presentation about the fruit breeding uh, in India. Uh, it's a very good uh, outline. Uh, what all the major work carried out? It's very well, very much useful for the students uh, and also the students from other campuses uh, who are uh, attending in the online. Uh, very much uh, thank you, Sangran, for a very nice uh, presentation once again. And uh, once again, one more thing I want to tell uh, even, uh, is accepting uh, for research collaboration with the IHR also. So this year onwards, uh, we are going to send the students. Uh, to IAHR, uh, so most probably PG and PhD we are planning uh, this year. Okay, um, thank you, thank you, Sangran.